about news and tutorials and resources that were published this week about WordPress. Uh, this is a very interactive show, uh, at least I try to make it that way, so feel free to chime in in the live chat and the comments uh, with any kind of questions or discussion that you want to have. Uh, we try to get, uh, get to know each other, uh, say hello, uh, really help each other out. Uh, the articles that I'm going to be talking about are in the description of this video, so feel free to expand it, and please do expand it, uh, so that you uh, see all of the all of the wonderful stuff that we've got to uh, share with you guys. Uh, they are, we're no, usually not able to get through all of them, so if you want to, uh, to check them all out, they are down there for you to click on and open up in lots and lots of tabs. Um, I'm seeing a lot of people in comments already, which is wonderful. Um, I, Uncle Social still thinks I have rhythm for some reason, and uh, I hope everybody is uh, doing well. I uh, I see uh, MB's uh, kicking us off, uh, <laughs> kicking us off uh, quick with uh, hello. Still looking for the Divi Speed update. I haven't heard anything uh, specifically about that one. We're hoping to get some uh, features out soon. Uh, was the last that I heard. Like we're looking at a few. Uh, I haven't heard anything else uh, other than uh, that this week. So we're crossing. We are crossing our fingers uh, that something will be coming out. I don't know if it's that one or a different feature. So uh, just know that that one is under uh, development. That uh, Nick said that that one was specifically there uh, being worked on. Um, uh, Naki, sorry, I cannot pronounce uh, the rest of your name and I'm probably, uh, mispronouncing that as well. I'm good. Uh, this is, uh, like what week five of lockdown quarantine time for, uh, for us. Maybe I don't remember. Um, hopefully y'all are uh, doing well, uh, as well. It is, uh, going a little bit, going a little bit crazy, but, uh, but you know, being in the house does that kind of thing. So, uh, I want to go ahead and uh, dig in uh, before we uh, waste too much time because, you know, we, we will every time. Um, excuse me. Um, the number one thing that I put on here was a 
was a blog from Weglot. Uh, I really, really think this one is something that we all need to kind of just consider. It's called The New Normal, How COVID-19 is Affecting Consumer Behaviors. And this one goes through a lot in terms of what people are doing right now and how our buying habits are changing. That how a lot of this in terms of the shipping infrastructure, uh, the manufacturing infrastructure, everything, um, it it is completely changing. And this is uh, people are looking at buying things and using services in a completely different way. And this article really kind of breaks it down. Um, it talks about global retail and the way that it's going with digital and e-commerce opportunities. Um, it talks about how different it is in different countries that uh, it says, uh, excuse me, this is the, the quote, businesses placed in countries where many languages are widely spoken should have their website translated into each of those languages. Uh, the, take the example of the U.S. who has the second largest Spanish speaking population in the world. Uh, if you're not having if you don't have an easily accessible Spanish site, uh, you're losing out on uh customers which you were already but now it's going to be even more um that is uh one where like that is very important people need that kind of thing it talks about targeting consumers and future aspirations and one of the things that it really talks about on this one uh that the long-term ramification of this uh, and i thought this was a really really good point is that we can all expect a shift toward frictionless retail. Um, and it says, with many more consumers opting for click and collect and delivery options as opposed to shipping things to a store. Uh, a lot of, and that doesn't affect a whole lot of y'all, but what that will do is if the culture of that changes, if people aren't necessarily going to be shipping to Walmart to pick it up while they're getting their groceries or something like that, then they're more likely to look around. They're more likely to get it shipped from a cheaper source, uh, maybe a completely different source, a slightly different product, whatever it is that gives them way more of an opportunity to find you. And so I think that as people are doing that, they, uh, they make a really, really good point in this uh, about that as their habits change, it's not going to just affect how, you know, the big box stores and things like that are, are really going to be uh, changing their business patterns. It's going to change how you guys are as well. Um, <laughs> Sorry, I uh, Uncle Social says that lockdown reminds me of the time I was in prison for using Comic Sans in red on a blue background. I actually did that when I was first learning how to do uh, code uh, at all, like HTML, when I was like 15 years old, I think. I uh, did that in an HTML site on Angel Fire because I thought that the really weird, cool effect... I don't know if y'all's eyes do this either. Like, this may be something my eyes do that I don't know. I've never really asked anybody. But it looks like it's hovering to me, that if I see red text on a blue background, it looks 3D in a uh, weird, like, parallax way where it, it kind of shifts back and forth. If I, if that, I loved that little weird effect, so I used to do that on Angel Fire sites. Um which was a GeoCities uh, competitor, if you uh, don't know that particular site. Uh, 147 asks how the GT Metrics tutorial is coming along. Uh, not at all at the moment. I am working, what am I working on right now? Uh, oh my goodness, I've been working on it all day and my brain just completely uh, left. I'm going to click on it to see because I can't remember what it was. Uh, conversion tracking, that is it. <laughs> uh, but that one is uh, is absolutely on my uh, queue to be able to uh, to research and get in, get into the topics, uh, suggested suggested topics rather. Um, oh man, the uh, Gotham font on a Superman site, tisk tisk, Cody Lee, like that's just bad. That's just bad form. Um, and Uncle Social says the new normal must be the end of high street retailers that uh, don't have an online presence, both small and independent, both small independent retailers all the way up to the top. And that's true. Like there are businesses here in my uh, my hometown where they are they are very small boutique shops, 
that uh, that really thrive on local business that have fairly high overhead and very low profit margins, uh, narrow profit margins, I should say. And I'm wondering how they're going to fare after this with uh, the way that we're doing. I hope they succeed, but they don't do anything online. And so it's this is going to change. I've seen people say uh, in the past, talk about selling on Instagram, things like that. I think social selling is going to go up too. Uh, there's a huge, Uncle Social says this too, there's a huge fashion retailer on UK High Street uh, called Primark, Primark, no way I can know how to pronounce that, has smugly and actively avoided selling online for years, uh, and it's had zero sales in the last, uh, in the last few weeks, that is, that's horrible, it's horrible for them and the people who work there, like, I hate, I feel bad for, for those folks, um, and I see on Facebook, John Cooper says, hello, hello, I'm doing well, hope you are. Uh, so moving into the second thing here, uh, shifting a little bit, uh, I just wanted to let y'all know that I saw this from WPMU Dev. Uh, they've been expanding their uh, membership service that they have, and I've been using it for the last little while. I've been uh, messing around with the plugins, uh, the hosting type stuff, uh, seeing that. And there it was an announcement I saw that is they are now doing email hosting uh, for business emails. And it ties in uh, with an article that was actually published today uh, that I did on the Elegant Theme site about uh, business emails uh, and getting your own uh, domain name and things like that, hosting uh, your own domain name. So I hate it that I missed this because it was just announced uh, when I was working on that, but uh, WPMU Dev is now doing uh, included email hosting with its uh, membership packages as well as the regular website hosting. So I thought that was cool. It's always, uh, always like seeing added bonuses, uh, well, added features moving into premium models of anybody's uh, services. So having something like that with DNS and different, uh, different kind of features like that that they can handle really is a move in the right direction. So kudos to them. I'm, uh, as I am all about reliable business emails and, and personalized emails because, uh, finding someone to be able to, uh, to handle like HIPAA compliance and different kinds of stuff like that. I'm not sure if they are, I'd have to look into it more. Uh, but if you can get good at doing stuff like that, like there's a, there's a lot there and it's hard to find. I see Daryl is a former GeoCity user. Um, I, I used some GeoCities, but mostly it was uh, Angel Fire for me. I did have Tripod. Uncle Social mentions uh, Tripod as well. That was a uh, always a good one to uh, to go to. It was number three for me though back then, um, and I did use Alta Vista as my search engine. Alta Vista and Web Squirrel. Uh, yeah, Web Squirrel, I think. That, that's what I'm thinking it is, Web Squirrel, um, were my go-to search engines. I remember uh, I entered a search engine contest. It was a search contest. This was like 2000. Uh, it was a search contest a cer uh, that a college was holding for high school students, and it was while I was in high school, a junior in high school, and Google had just like started being not quite mainstream, and it was... Um, it was really uh, good. We did really well because we used Google then instead of the others, and uh, we beat everybody but one uh, one team. So it was uh, changed the way that we did everything. It was crazy. Uh, but when I think about those old websites, I can't help but think about the search engines too. Um, so now I wanted to let you guys know that WordCamp Europe, we've talked about it being canceled this year, which really stinks. I hate uh, that we are not going to be able to get Mac and Donetta there this year like we had hoped, but it is online this year. Everybody can see it, everybody can register, and everybody can watch it online as it happens and talk and do all of the great stuff. Uh, and the tickets are free and registration is open. So if you want to be able to watch those talks, really get some good uh, WordPress, really good WordPress news and tutorials and uh, things like that. Like those uh, conference talks are always so good at these uh, national and, uh, and regional uh, WordCamps. Do it now. Sign up. You will get a uh, you will get an email about uh, it starting, getting the ticket, and everything. Uh, Daryl Jordan pointed out that WordCamp US is now online. Which yeah, that one. I 
don't blame them. I think I'm I'm going to be personally amazed if there is any major conference or gathering that happens in person this year. That if uh, if any major ones do, and it really stinks that that you know planning that far ahead. Like I'm I'm legit scared to go to conferences. I am totally freaked out by the idea of being around. I don't even like the idea of going back to having to shake somebody's hand. So it's going to be interesting to see how these, uh, these conferences and major events uh, like WordCamp US, EU, Asia that uh, got canceled and moved into next year are really going to be handled in the future. Um, it's uh, going to be interesting, I guess is the best way to put it. Um, uh, Naki says, I faced some problems while making a we uh, website with a Learn Dash plugin. Um, I'm curious. I'm Googling this uh, because I can't remember if we have a Learn Dash. Uh, this was written last year. I'm going to post this in. Uh, my key to uh, do that. We there's a uh, plugin called the Divi Learn Dash Kit that may work for you. Um, and then Learn Dash themselves has well, I clicked the wrong thing. Uh, Learn Dash themselves has a how to use the Divi theme with uh, Learn Dash. If you haven't uh, seen those, uh, hopefully you'll be able to check those out, and they'll help at least a little bit on that. Um, it's uh, there's always there's always going to be issues when you're you know interacting with anything like with a system like Learn Dash, but hopefully those two will uh, do that. And uh, uh, Mike Matera on YouTube says that yeah, Mac has some uh, Learn Dash tutorials uh, on YouTube with uh, using it with Divi. Um, I remember watching those a long time ago when people asked about it. Um, Oh man, that was sometime last year, I believe, uh, that somebody asked about it, and I, I ended up watching through those. But thank you, thank you, Mike. Uh, really appreciate that. And uh, do, do 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 do. Where was I? I saw I saw one um, that I was gonna comment on. Where are we at? Oh, there it is. Uh, Mike said, uh, same here. Uh, waiting on significant progress on the medical front in terms of uh, how we're gonna be able to handle the groups and things like that. It's uh, the just groups of people around. It's terrifying. Uh, just having friends and family who have had to deal with the healthcare system over the past few weeks has been a nightmare. So uh, at least, and here in America, at least, I'm not sure how, uh, I mean, it's a nightmare everywhere right now. Uh, I can't even imagine the pressure to get everything together and working um, is going everywhere. Like it's, it's such a, a patchwork uh, in that industry right now, just trying to hold on. I look forward to there being a real solid way for people to be able to handle that kind of group, uh, that group dynamic that will then filter out to everywhere else. Once, uh, once that happens, or hopefully if somebody else figures it out, we'll filter in. Uh, so yeah, the uh, it's nuts. Now, Talking about that, us kind of being scared of uh, getting in, going into public, having to deal with the crowds, all of that. Um, Matt Mullenweg on MA.TT, uh, Matt, uh, posted an article about uh, the Tulsa remote worker experiment. And I had absolutely had to link you this. I linked to the article he was talking about uh, from CityLab.com that Sarah Holder wrote. It is talking about how right now people aren't moving. And this was going on well before we got quarantined and locked down everywhere. That millennials in general, uh, my generation, people who are younger, are not moving as often and we're not wanting to move for work nearly as much. So there are a lot of uh, co companies, uh, cities in particular, who are paying people to move. And they're, uh, they're actually uh, giving monetary stipends as well as subsidizing homes to get people uh, to move to their cities uh, to work. 
even if that work is remote. Like, that's the thing. Uh, like, a lot of them are pulling in remote workers and co-working for co-working spaces, things like that, where even if their job isn't based in that city, they're just bringing in money for their economy by inviting uh, people who are able to do remote work, which are generally uh, higher paid employees, well, until this, then where everyone is a remote worker, but they're pulling in uh, this new, uh, fresh uh, stream of income for their economy. And the, this is a really good idea, and I wanted to bring this program, this kind <clears throat> Ooh, that was almost uh, almost a good choke. Um, I wanted to bring this idea of these programs to y'all, that if you've not seen this kind of thing before, that you can go look at the look for incentive programs if you've been looking for a change, if you've been looking to move, if you just uh, think it sounds great for somebody to pay you $10,000 to move to a new city. Um, these kind of programs exist. Uh, also had to mention this because as I'm reading this article, it talks about similar programs and uh, the one that it links to, it says similar programs are being tried in Vermont, uh, Northwest Alabama, and most recently Topeka, Kansas. Uh, and they link to the Northwest Alabama, which is where I am. Uh, they talk about my city's initiative to uh, do this and bring remote workers in. They actually uh, have friends who were putting this together over the last uh over the last, I think, year, year and a half maybe, um, of bringing remote workers into our town. And uh, I just thought it was really neat how my hometown here uh, was one of the ones that was like, oh, yeah, Tulsa's doing this, Florence, Alabama is doing this. It, it was uh, really, really neat uh, to see that uh, ours was linked to. It was and it's a good idea. That's the thing. Like it's, it was cool to see my hometown recognized for the good work that, uh, that they're doing, but also talking about Tulsa, us, anything else, it's just a good program in general. Um, so if that sounds like something you would be interested in, look up these kinds of programs, check out that city lab article and, uh, look at the remote work experiments They're They are pretty cool. Um, Luis asks, uh, hi, when will, uh, uh, when will be launched the Divi marketplace? And I don't know. Um, it is in the rounds of beta testing with certain, not employers, uh, certain businesses and brands right now working out the bugs on the seller side of things. Uh, so we are, uh, getting close to launching that we are, are, are hopefully going to be able to get it really soon. Uh, the last that I saw, it was absolutely beautiful. Like they have done a, just an amazing job at putting it together and making it easy to, uh, to find what you need and, and, you know, making it a pleasure to use. So I'm really, really excited to get that launched. We're going to be really excited to get that launched. I just haven't heard another window since we, uh, have been working with different developers on the back end uh, to get all the stores set up uh, that we could to work out any of the uh, bugs and kinks there. Uh, but hopefully soon, we're, that is what we're pushing for. We're 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 cautiously optimistic. I'm cautiously optimistic that uh, that I can say soon and it not be uh, soon. So we're uh, we're hoping, but it is in uh, the stages of beta testing right now uh, with developers. Um. And Uncle Social says, talking about uh, the remote work, uh, we'll give you uh, for free one hectare, uh, which is about 2.5 acres of land if you move to the Russian Far East and live there for five years. Uh, that is a serious remote working test. Oh, my goodness. Like, that is that is crazy. Uh, like, Awesome. That's that's really neat. Uh, that's a that's a really really neat idea. I don't think that I would be able to live in far eastern Russia very easily or comfortably. Uh, but for people who could, that's a that's a really 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 uh, interesting uh, way of incentivizing people. Um, the uh, let's see. Uh, Let's see. 
There we go. Uh, Elise uh, says, uh, I've experienced some issues with my email opt-in and images for the past few days. Uh, they can't load on the live website, uh, but you can see them in the back end. Um, Uncle Social says on that one, uh, have you disabled all other plugins as a test in case it's a caching plugin interference? Immediately, I think of caching that uh, either the caching plugin is holding them uh, hostage and uh, just not uh, sending them through correctly, or your browser in some way is, uh, is being funky uh, and doing that. If you have a CDN, flush the CDN. Um, it is more of the... Uh, more likely to do with caching than anything specifically with Divi. Um, but if it turns out that it is, uh, then that's a support question. But always in my, in my, my mind, flushing the um, browser cache and clearing it is the uh, turning it off and turning it back on of uh, stuff not showing up that whenever I see that, I automatically do it. And then I end up turning off any plugins that are, and I know I should do the turn off all plugins and make sure that it's doing it then, but I turn off all related plugins to it that could be uh, conflicting that uh, would like interact with images, which would be uh, image optimization plugins, caching plugins, and that sort of thing. Um, then I move to, uh, to something else. Uh, Mike Matera says uh, he ran into images not displaying on the front end issue with Jetpack image speed up, had to deactivate that Jetpack uh, site speed up feature, and that fixed it. Me too. Uh, I no longer use the Jetpack image optimization and uh, lazy loading feature because it did not like something about my website. Um, I have no idea what <laughs> I have no idea why because it works on most of my other sites like I've had it happen but the main one I was using it on was a very image heavy site did not like it they uh, the images would show on the back end I thought everything was great and then I loaded up and they're all broken uh, and the, everything is garbled it's like I don't understand why jetpack specifically did it but you're right when I stopped it with the site speed up and lazy loading uh, that uh, that did fix it um, Benjamin asked, what's the reference to local press in the title about? That was a reference to the uh, remote worker on trying to get a lot more local people uh, in. Uh, it was uh, may have been a, uh, a very poor uh, joke at pulling in to, uh, to the topic, but it was uh, trying to get local people to, to work and uh, to work remotely and really get uh, to boost the local economy is where I was uh, thinking on that one. Um, See where it's another one. Um, uh, at least also ask what are the best caching plugins? Um, for me, I've had the best luck with WP Rocket. Um, but in terms of uh, free ones, I've had uh, WP Super Cache and W3 Fastest Cache uh, have probably had the best luck uh, with those. Um, it uh, those are the ones. Like I said, right now. I've had, uh, I have WP Rocket giving me the fastest speeds. Um, last year, uh, before I started using it, it was a WP fastest cache. Or is it W3? WP, the one with the cheetah. <laughs> I know that's weird. The one with the cheetah icon on the, the, uh, the, the plugin repository is uh, the one that I used uh, great. I think that's WP fastest cache. Um, that one works great. And then W3. Um, The, uh, yeah, uh, Mike says, yep, the cheetah is WP fastest. These always mess with me. Like, it, it happens when I'm not just live talking about them on here. It's when I'm looking them up to do something, I get them wrong. Like, I'll put in WP super cache and W3 fastest. Like, I can't, I cannot get, like, those four particular phrases to go in the right order. They just mishmash. Um, so, yeah, the names are so similar. It's just, like... I, I remember the cheetah was on my website. Just <laughs> what I did. Um, so, so yeah, thank you. Thank you on that one, Mike. Um, and Uncle Social has some happy news. This is great because I haven't seen this, that ICANN has blocked the sale of the .org domain. Yes. Uh, it was a horrible private equity group was about to buy it and renewal prices for .orgs would have skyrocketed. Um, 
I'm so glad to hear that. Uh, I haven't seen an update since uh, the initial news went out a while back about this uh, this company buying the .org TLD. Uh, I am very, very happy that that didn't happen, uh, partly because my wife uh, works in the uh, nonprofit sector, so just I'm around that kind of thing a lot, uh, but also... Charging crazy amounts from a private equity group for .org of all things, it's just, it's just bad form, y'all. Um, I can't remember the name of the company. I don't think I knew the company who had uh, any like specifics about the company that was buying it, but the news when I read it was not looking good, so that's awesome. That is, that is happy, happy news. Uh, thank you, Uncle Social, for that one. And then uh, Mike asked, was that EIG who wanted to buy it? And I don't think so, but uh, all the I've not heard good things about EIG in a long time. So uh, I would love for them to get their reputation back uh, for being a uh, from people. Like, I don't... makes me sad. Um, anyway, the last thing under news that I put in here is uh, the Divi Design Showcase. Not going to walk through it. I just want y'all to know about it um, every month at the beginning of the month we do a highlighting highlighting showcase of what of community submissions of really good designs that y'all do uh, check this out it's got 10 absolutely beautiful websites on it yours might be on there uh, um, if you haven't ever submitted to that before uh, check it out look at the blog post uh, check out the email and uh, if you're really proud of the design that you've done uh, send it in and uh, let us know about it uh, so that we can show you off. Uh, the We could not do what we do without y'all, so we want to showcase uh, the, the good work that you do. Uh, as, as long as you let us, we have to know about it. So email us with what your best ones are and let us, uh, let us go through them, and uh, maybe you'll get picked through the monthly showcase. Uh, that said, we also do have open submissions for blog posts. Uh, I haven't mentioned this in a while, but while I'm talking about submissions, um, there is a post that you can find that is just called uh, Open Submissions uh, that you can search our blog for, uh, and we will pay you to write for our blog if your pitch is accepted. So it is a right, the last I checked, it was a $250 uh, flat fee for the uh publication of the article and we uh would absolutely love to see some of the awesome work that you do i know that y'all uh y'all who are talking all the time on here every week uh are brilliant with the solutions that you have with stuff so uh let's share that with the community right um that said uh moving into tutorials right now every week this has come up that uh in the tutorials, every week someone has asked, because of our uh, our situation about setting up an online ordering site uh, for restaurants and stuff, I've mentioned it a couple of times, commercegurus.com has an absolutely wonderful walkthrough on creating an online uh, food system in WooCommerce that, um, that they walk you through everything from being able to set up the delivery options, uh, how, how the food gets ordered, uh, using WooCommerce, all of that stuff, putting in the different menu items to be able to work its product pages. It is great. Um, if you are looking for work again, I will say this again, reach out to local restaurants. If they don't have an online ordering platform, this may be a way to uh, pitch some work. It is super good. Uh, I do like this article a lot. It will teach you how to do this. It is also a good walkthrough on just how to do uh, WooCommerce. <laughs> that uh, if you have uh, needed a complete, you know, fr from the beginning to the end of a WooCommerce website and be able to get products to the consumer, this one really does break it down well. Um, and video says, I do online food systems, and there's so many reasons to not use uh, WooCommerce in an on-demand situation. And that's true. I mean, there are uh, many platforms out there. I would what, what do you recommend? Because uh, in terms of that, I don't actually have any experience with uh, dedicated uh, food platforms uh, other than um, 
is it Waiter, W-A-I-T-R is a platform? I can't remember what I've used with the restaurant I work with uh, sometimes, but um, generally the reason that I push for WooCommerce or even recommend WooCommerce right now is uh, the speed at which these uh, sites can be set up and uh, because the businesses need it very uh, quickly to just kind of work. So, um, yeah, if it were a... Uh, an absolute, you know, all the time in the world, I absolutely don't think WooCommerce is what I would use, but, um, it would, the ones that, uh, the reason I like stuff like this is because of timetables actually right now. Um, so uncle social says, uh, regarding the, uh, Divi design showcase, I'd love to see a Jason or Don yet live cast that looked at one of these Divi showcase sites and maybe walked us through, uh, recreating some of its key design features. Oh, good idea. I'm just going to straight up copy and paste that uh, into my notes, Uncle Social. Uh, bear with me one second while I, uh, while I find my uh, sticky note over here to the side uh, to be able to, uh, <laughs> to do that. That's a really, really good idea. I will see how, they, uh, how that goes along uh, when I get a chance to pitch that that's a good idea i like the idea of being able to uh completely broke my brain i'm not sure why but being able to walk through the the key features on that the um the work that is being done with divi out there is astonishing and these in particular i like i know that there's a joke going around the divi community that you can tell a site uh <clears throat> excuse me, you can tell a site was built with Divi just by looking at the header. And uh, now that that's changing with the theme builder, um, some of the sites are doing just beautiful things. So I'm uh, really excited to see more and more and more of that. Um, M147 Dev asked what the name of the Woo walkthrough was. Um, it's the first one under the tutorials heading called Creating an Online Food Ordering System in WooCommerce. Um, that... Uh, that I was mentioning. Sorry. Uh, again, comments. I get confused. Think about eight different things at once. Y'all know. Um, and I see that Nike already registered for the WordCamp. We'll be there. That's fantastic. I love these things. I'm so glad that uh, that you're going to be able to. If you've never watched virtually or in person uh, WordCamp talks very much or ever at all, really, it they are so good. Like you learn so much. Uh, they're they're just the and the national ones like this uh, and international ones like EU are the best of the best of the best. So uh, they are very highly uh, recommended. And then, um, but yeah, I'll I'll definitely make a note of that about the the key design features because we we definitely do. That's a good idea. Now, the. Next tutorial I have is one that Jason did, and I was really curious on how he was going to do this. So a uh, while back, he pitched a uh, how to build a Divi notification box for COVID-19 updates. That this one is like y'all will see on pretty much every website that... Um, you will see the, you know, this is how we're reacting to COVID, that uh, this is how our business is changing, this is what we're doing, all that. Um, pretty much every website has that. And they're usually uh, pop-ups of some kind. They're usually uh, fairly obtrusive. Uh, and I generally ignore them. But Jason has put together a how to build one using Divi and you're doing it without pop-ups. Like, I love this because you can use it for a COVID notification, but you can also use it as just a normal uh, notification on your site by doing this. And it uh, uses jQuery to hide the section. And the brilliant thing about this, and the reason that I really, really love the way that, it, that it's done, is... Um, it uses actually uses Divi sections to do it and modules. It's not uh, pulling in anything else to have to do a pop up. It's actually using the uh, the the tag section on there, uh, the blue section that we have uh, to do all of this uh, using blurbs and different uh, different buttons and uh, CSS and jQuery to do it. 
it's really, really cool. Like I was super impressed because when he, he pitched it, they were talking about it in the meeting. I was like, yeah, that'll be really cool. I have no idea how, how to do that, but that's going to be really cool. But I want to see how he does it. And uh, doing it with sections and a little bit of jQuery was, uh, was uh, really, really not the way I expected it. So I am I am impressed, and I think y'all should look at it, because this is the kind of way uh, to do this if you need this notification, but it's also a way to know how to do just general notifications that can be dismissed that are not added on top of the site, that it's not pulling any other plugins, it's not pulling uh, any other kind of scripts, really, other than the uh, jQuery it calls when you press the button. Um, it's just part of the site that functions as a notification. It's really cool. Like I've not actually ever seen anything like this. So I was really impressed that uh, it's just a part of the page that then goes away. Uh, and it looks just like you would have any kind, any other kind of overlay up top. Like it's, like I said, I'm impressed. Uh, kudos to you, Jason, that uh, I am... I was I was not expecting how that one to work the way that it did. Um, now, video has a good question about that that I'm not actually sure. Uh, how does that affect SEO when it's not an iframed light box uh, from jQuery? The, at that point, it becomes uh, Google primary data. Good question. I don't know the answer to that. Um, I would think, and I, no, I'm not even going to say that because I don't know uh, how that would play at all. Um, hmm. I'm going to have to look that up. Like, that's a Yoast question <laughs> to me uh, in terms of uh, how that kind of thing would play because I'm not sure if you can like hide, I don't even want to say no, the, the, the equivalent of no follow on particular, particular blocks of text and code on your uh, website. I'm not sure if you can do that. Um, that is, huh. <laughs> it's a you question thing. So a uh, thanks video. Um, but that, uh, yeah, it would be as a magnificent pop-up built into Divi. Give us time. Give us time. Um, I'm I'm not sure where that is on the development path, but I've heard it talked about. So we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Um, but uh, but yeah, that's a good question. Now I'm now I'm not going to be able to stop thinking about that until I figure it out, uh, or at least hear about it. So I might as well move on to the next thing, which is also really cool and not scroll effect related. Uh, that was Donetta's turning D Divi's shop module into dynamic product swipe cards on mobile. Uh, again, this one is beautiful. Um, the, the swipe cards on mobile, just it, it's, it's pretty. Uh, when you take the shop module and you can just you know swipe between different cards. I'm a big fan of cards on websites. Uh, really don't know why. I just tend to, when I can scroll through cards, I tend to like it better than uh, whenever I just have a list or a particular web page or a typical grid. I don't know why. Uh, but if you're like that and uh, you have uh, a shop module that you want or just want to have uh, different cards on your site that people can swipe through from one way to for one reason or another, um, you can do that using the shop module now. It's really pretty. Um, so I wanted to bring that up, that it's another one of those things where I wouldn't think about the shop module being used this way and uh, specifically designed to work like this. It's really cool. I um, I, I like it. Um, I don't know what's wrong with me, y'all. Um, but there is, just to go very quickly through here, um, I'm not out of time, but I don't want to get to the point where I am because uh, I want to get to some of the other things on here. Um, there is a, a Cosmo Labs article on uh, how to use a membership website builder um, that really goes through, I can't remember now after uh, reading it, what the... Um, Oh man, I messed up the URL on that one when I pasted it in. I, I apologize uh, for that. Uh, 
but it's a it's a very good article if you can take out the second uh, the middle part of that URL that's the title again. Sorry. Um, WPMU Dev also has a really good article this week on uh, error as you go, um, which is how to design custom WordPress uh, HTTP error pages for all kinds of errors. Um, and then Cardsmith.co has a uh, how to use a Kanban and Scrum hybrid, which is really neat. Um, I love project management. I love project management software probably more than I reasonably should. Um, so I saw this and was really excited again. Uh, so I wanted to show y'all this because whenever there is a better way to do things and better organize a project from the top down, I'm there. And uh, I, I really liked this one. Uh, 147 Dev in the comments says, uh, and Eddie also on uh, uh, Facebook says, uh, how can I get a t-shirt? Everyone wants your shirt. Uh, what if ET did a raffle for Divi stuff, like a dollar per entry, uh, and hear many, as many times as you like. That way everybody gets a chance and uh, not the richest guy at the auction, then donate to a COVID charity. Not a bad idea. What we, what we are doing, though, for sure, is uh, if you want a Divi shirt, which are one of the most highly sought after items in the world, um, join our meetup groups. Uh, you can go to meetup.com slash pro slash Divi, and you will be able to uh, see which ones are near you. Um, we will be, uh, as the groups grow, they're going to uh, have uh, t-shirts as uh, part of the swag that they get. So I don't know how any of that is working in terms of the details, um, especially now that COVID is uh, going out and preventing us from actually you know, meeting up. Uh, but virtual is an option uh, to do stuff like that. So I... Uh, but I do want you to know that if you uh, join, start, or are already a part of a successful Divi, official Divi uh, meetup, then uh, t-shirts are at some point going to be available to you. So uh, that is a good reason to check us out on meetup.com, right? Um, and get to know the rest of the community. Like, that's the real benefit of this, is being able to know your local community, because there are lots and lots and lots of people uh, in your area that I, that use Divi, I guarantee it. Like, it's funny for me whenever I, like, wear a shirt like this shirt out or mention something about it that uh, I have, that people know it. And they're like, oh, you, oh, Divi. And uh, one of my, one of my uh, acquaintances, contacts here in town uh, actually did work for Nick about 10 years ago. Uh, they do video work and he had worked with Nick uh, before. It's just like interesting stuff. Um, and then uh, Uncle Social says, uh, or actually it was video that says that let's raffle the, the lamp in the back. Um, that will never happen. My mommy made that for me when I was 15 years old, and uh, I still have uh, I still have it here. It is uh, that is a treasure to me. Um, if I raffle that, it will uh, be for like 40 million dollars. And if you're willing to donate 40 million dollars, my mom would totally understand. So uh, that's the price on Spider-Man lamp. Uh, but no, that one is one of those that I was like, that's why it's there is because it's it's meaningful to me that it was a uh, handmade, hand painted, drawn things like that. Um, and then, uh, Naki asks, are there any official Slack groups, of uh, Divi like, uh, on Facebook and not right now there, there are not, uh, we have our, our work Slack, but, uh, in terms of having a public community Slack, we don't yet. Um, I know that that and, uh, discord we've, we're, we've discussed, uh, I would love to have a discord, uh, personally. I know that's been mentioned on here before. Um, and it, as in terms of unofficial ones, Y'all can always start a uh, Divi Discord and we can join and have fun. Um, I don't have time to moderate something like that. Uh, I've already got too many things uh, moderating as it is. But the Facebook is the number one place right now to go. Um, we do still have the forums on our website. They are... Uh, unmoderated. We don't uh, su do support through them, but uh, Facebook is the uh, preferred way right now with the uh, with the Divi theme users group. Um, and video, I thank you. Uh, it's a great lamp. Um, and Nick went to your college. That's awesome. Uh, 
And Uncle Social says, I wonder what Nick's hair looked like in his yearbook. Um, it would, of course, like you said, look totally fabulous. Um, I, I am always jealous of people who can have good hair. Like, my hair is not good. Uh, the longer mine gets, it just, like, grows straight out from my head. It is not a, uh, not a good look. Um, and so quarantine has kept me from, from not having to do that. Anyway, uh, the after that, there is a about midway down the tutorial section, there is an article called C just just talk, called CSS Grid Tutorial. If you have wanted to get to get along and uh, get started with the uh, CSS Grid stuff, this is a beginner's guide to uh, creating layouts with Grid, uh, so you can jump in with that. And then uh, just below that, uh, Convicio, it has a, a WP Feedback Virtual Summit, um, what WordPress agencies need to survive and thrive during the pandemic. I put this under tutorials because it's kind of a how-to. Like, it's got people's advice on here uh, where they had sessions uh, on, uh, like, running... Uh, how automation makes the lives of WP professionals easier, like B2B marketing right now, things like that. And um, they're, they're, that's probably my favorite advice. Bridget, uh, at the very bottom of the, uh, the quote section of this article, uh, says, and I'll just read it, Regardless of the outlook, it's important for businesses to continue their marketing efforts. If it was like that, or excuse me, it was like this in the 2009 recession and the pandemic is no different. Even in prosperous times, WordPress businesses have unique issues, one of which is overcoming the perception of product abandonment. We as an ecosystem have a bad reputation for building products only to stop supporting them when we get bored. We stop build we start building websites and then disappear. I highly recommend publishing to your blog at least once a month, once a week is better, uh, and personally engaging on Twitter daily. If you outsource, keep your vendor. Uh, scaling back may be a quick solution, but how will it affect you in Q4 or Q1 of 2021? Uh, it might not be worth it. Um, the uh, um, that is uh, probably the best thing like that I can think of is right now everything goes kind of crazy. Uh, we have no idea what the future is going to hold, and so we need to avoid making rash decisions about our businesses, uh, both in terms of uh, jumping into a new career um, too hard, too fast, uh, doing it without the right plan, or uh, shifting business and pivoting in any way and, and like scaling back in order to accommodate this. Um, look at, uh, different, uh, options and think about what, uh, what you actually need to survive and do this. Um, so I, I really did just like all of the advice that st and stuff that went through that and, um, smashing magazine, a couple below that, uh, has a how to succeed in wireframe design, which I love wireframing. I'm not good at it, but I always try to draw out wireframe uh, stuff before I design anything for real. And uh, I love the idea that I can that I can uh, like get better at it because I need to. Um, Toots Plus has a supercharger Facebook ads with adding Facebook pixels. Uh, so that one is right for you, Uncle Social. Um, and then there is using a get subtree from WP Shout uh, for WordPress product projects. Um, I am big a big fan of Git. I like Git. Um, I, I like Git better than SVN. Uh, but, um, but yeah, the... Um, Using Git with WordPress isn't always the easiest, but it's uh, it's possible, and that one is uh, is good for you. Now, only have a few minutes left. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I got tickled on uh, on uh, <laughs> on the on the comments here. Uh, first, uh, Bogdan uh, thinks that I look like a robot, uh, which I'm going to. Uh, gonna take and uh take as a compliment and uh then uncle social wants <laughs> is growling because he doesn't want to give facebook client ad money um but it works so well um i do get it though now under the resources section uh just had a handful this week um on elegant themes we posted a three best paypal alternatives uh for you to use uh on wordpress that there are um there are lots of 
uh, countries that PayPal doesn't work in. And so we wanted to put stuff out there so that you could uh, look and see uh, if there is a better option uh, than waiting on PayPal or trying to, to, uh, to circumvent somehow. Um, WP Beginner has a really, really good uh, newsletter plugin article that talks about which ones are the best newsletter plugins. Um, and then we have a uh, really, really good article uh, on what is IAAS, uh, PAAS, and SAAS. I don't know how to pronounce the first one. I just know SAS and PASS, but I don't know how to say uh, IAAS uh, out loud. So, um, it is the difference in these types of businesses in uh, cloud businesses, basically, you know, software as a service or uh, like that. So it's very interesting if you're looking at uh, getting into development at any, in any way whatsoever, uh, especially if you're like uh, Bogdan, who uh, opened an agency and is making a website with Divi, uh, looking at the uh, different different ways that you can do certain things. Uh, it's just a good idea to have in the back of your mind. So I really like that one. Um, then there's a setup guide for WordPress multi-site. Um, if you're not using multi-site and you manage a bunch, it might be worth your time. Um, I've thought about that recently on uh, setting it up because I have uh, some that I manage um for just different people that I have on my hosting account that I thought I was like, man, I probably should have done that on multi-site. I should probably set up a multi-site from this point on for any that I do. Uh, so I'll see if that actually happens and if I learn how to do it uh, better and manage them better. And then uh, the uh, last one is from uh, WP White Security on CCPA compliance. The California Consumer, Consumer Protection Act um, is a compliance guide for WordPress admins. Uh, it is a really, really good. Just make sure that you're, it's like GDPR only from California and a little stricter. So check it out so that you make sure that you're within, uh, within where you need to be. No. Hey, that's it. Um, we are done. That is where we will cut it today. Um, remember y'all smash the like button, subscribe, and tell Facebook and YouTube that you want to get updated every time we go live. You want, uh, you will not get live notifications if you don't, uh, because just subscribing or liking the page won't do that. So uh, ring the bell, tell Facebook that you want uh, notifications. That way, you uh, you will uh, find out when I go live on Fridays at 3 p.m. Eastern, or when Jason and Donetta go live on Tuesdays at 3 p.m. Eastern or on when Mac goes live after a Divi feature release on Mondays at 6 a.m. Eastern. Um, I see Daryl who says uh, that you let me to get to the end again. Uh, I beat you this week. Uh, so uh, we'll see if you guys, uh, you guys can beat me and keep me uh, talking through the uh, articles next week. Um, I will see you guys next week. Y'all, please stay safe. Uh, take care of your families, take care of yourselves and your friends. Uh, don't shake hands and uh, try your very, very best to, uh, to keep everything as uh, sanitary as possible. Take care of yourselves. I will see you next Friday. Bye, everybody.